Well, let's just get started. Again, I'm Derek Jameson, and if you're watching this, you probably know who I am based off of me going live. And I am here with Juliana Devar with The Honey Hive, and she focuses on dreams. So I'm going to have her kind of take it away with um, what kind of dream work she does in just a second. But what I do want to say is how we, how we met. Yeah, please share um, that. We are actually family in a, um, in a channeling group that we met uh, in last year. So we've been friends ever since. She was my first partner in our channeling group. And um, she is such an amazing healer. She could see what I was dealing with at the time and she transmuted that energy. It was so incredible. And that's also why I wanna share everybody else so that's how we met um but i would love for you juliana to talk about your dream work how you help people direct dreams interpret dreams access information all that kind of stuff so take it away yeah absolutely okay well hi there everyone welcome um thank you for being here or seeing this later um my name is juliana um and dreams have pretty much always been a passion of mine just trying to understand these vivid sagas that unfold night after night and uh, what really drew them to me even deeper, because I'd always kind of been connected to them as a kid, was when I started going into my dreams and tinkering with them just a little bit here and a little bit there. And what I started to realize was that it was these little shifts within my dreams were radically shifting my outer reality. So within like a year and a half, I went on this self-healing journey without kind of anyone else prompting me along this way to transform um, a lot of my core beliefs, a lot of my attitudes. I was really rooted in anger for a lot of years of my life. I was able to transmute um, sadness, grief, all by um, entering into this playground of the dream time reality. So my whole framework of dream work is bringing community together to explore this subconscious realm to really understand what these nightly dream um, sagas are trying to tell us on how to guide a better waking reality. So I really stand firmly, uh, firmly rooted in the belief that what we do in anything that we explore in the dream time is to better serve us here in waking reality. So in this way, using both of them, um, to affect um, each other and to really step into like our own creatorship. So what I do is community-based dream work um, and it's gathering um, people usually um, in home, but now we're doing virtual dream circles, which is pretty exciting. And everyone comes together to share their dreams. Um, and it's really important to me that everyone who's there um, has a voice that they can share, that can be heard, and also holding up a mirror for each person. So as we listen and receive a dream, we really step into our own intuitive nature to understand what that dream message um, could possibly mean. And we offer this back to the dreamer who shared their dream as mirrors to understand this from a wider perspective. And in this way, the dreamer who shares a dream um, and basically can pick and choose of what they like and create an entire synthesis and then start to use those other, I guess, interpretations or understandings as keys to unlock. Always give the dreamer um, their own sovereignty to understand what the dream message may mean to them. And we always move towards this place of, okay, so we have gotten some insight. We're looking at this dream, but how can this shape, affect, mold, and move us into greater harmony and connection with our waking life? So everything from the dream time is meant to bring us um, back into creatorship, back into wholeness, um, and remembering that we really, I mean, we can create so much here. Um, so it's fun. It's exciting. You know, there's different ways to enter a dream um, and to understand it. And I believe that dreams really, uh, as much as you can do, like, say, inner work and shadow work, there is so much fun and accessibility that's there as well. You can work on your powers. You can work on um, telepathy. You can work on your healing modalities. You can even, like, enter into meditation through a dream and then go even deeper and start to go you know, deeper and deeper into the recesses of not just your mind, but this collective mind and this collective healing. So I really, uh, it's fun. It's exciting. I love it. Um, I love hearing other people's dreams and 
even just the sense of like community of when you bring a dream to dream circle, you're also offering that up to the circle. So there's so much wisdom that I can find by hearing your dream that now helps me engage my life from a more heart centered place or helps me um, unlock keys within my own reality. Yeah, well, I've taken one of your dream circles before. And I think that was <clears throat> one of the really cool aspects of it was being able to share a dream or a reoccurring dream that takes place, and then have people say it from their point of view, if they had the dream what it would feel like or look like to them um, mm -hmm. to, to give that unique perspective because when it when it's us doing the dreaming we don't always we see it from our our one-sided perspective yes so when we get the interpretation from outside in a trusting environment it's really cool to see how people um what people's interpretations or versions mm -hmm. of what our experience is. And I really like that. And you also incorporate some of the drumming with the dream circles as well. Yeah, so the drum is fun because uh, that just helps you slip into a place uh, where a little bit of brain entrainment happens. So that way you can get into meditation a little bit quicker. So the drum just provides that like framework for people to slip into meditative states to come into that receptivity to say, hey, what dream wants to work with me? Or on the other end, to enter into a meditation, to re-enter a dream and start to alter and shift the energy of a dream. So the drum is a great tool for that. Yeah, definitely. Um, now, what do you say, because I know in my past, I have had certain nightmares or night terrors or experiences mm -hmm. when sleeping. So sometimes trying to go deeper into dream work can be a little bit like, well, what if I go deeper and then I access something I really don't want to see or experience? Yeah. How would you like set up parameters for um, like bravery with dreaming? Yeah. Um, so I, that's also one of the core things that actually brought me to dreaming. I used to suffer from pretty terrible nightmares as a child. Um, and I realized that I would lay in bed and I would pray. I'm like, okay, this time I'm going to see giant teddy bears and giant candy and I'm going to go in there. And without realizing at the time, I realized that I was setting an intention for my dream, how I wanted my dream to play out. So I started realizing quickly that with those intentions, um, I was already creating a dream in the waking state of like what was to unfold. Um, mm. So that in the sense of like, we can shift um, and guide the dreams towards, it doesn't have to always be the nightmares, but I also personally encourage people to, if you can go through the nightmares because there's so much healing that wants to come up. For things like reoccurring nightmares, um, we can usually look to like trauma that hasn't been fully processed or trauma that's been stored um, in the body that's asking to be looked at and looking and asking to be healed. And sometimes um, with nightmares, those dreams seem to get bigger and bigger. And that's usually um, indicative of it hasn't been looked at. So it's kind of like screaming for attention. It's just like, hey, I'm here on this big, scary, dark thing. You're not listening to me. So the dreams tend to get louder and louder to the point where they're just like, I want to be integrated. I want to come to wholeness. So I find that when it comes to nightmares, um, and if you start to set your set up like a little journey for yourself. So one thing that I like to do is if I have a nightmare and I wake up from it and I'm like, man, you know, I was really, really running from these terrible things and I didn't do anything. Um, well, first I'd like to see what's, what is the dream? You know, what is the dream showing me? So it's showing me that I am running and I'm not facing this. So instead of, um, I guess, harping on the darkness that's coming, it's just like, okay, my game plan is the next time I'm running from something, this is how I'm going to act. And that simple um, step right there is planting a seed to your subconscious saying that the next time I encounter X, here is my game plan. You don't necessarily need to even be consciously um, lucid for this to happen, but you've already told yourself this is what's going to happen. And it may take a couple times or you may hit it on the first time. But what you'll notice is that you've told yourself this is how I'm going to respond. So then you start to create this entire scene where you're coming into your creatorship, right? And you're stepping into this and realizing that I can change and shift that energy. And it's pretty exciting. I feel like when people are first able to do this, you recognize that there's so much that you can actually shift. 
So I definitely say have small, like little goals. Like you don't have to have the big plan in there, but just like the next time that I see the um, sleep paralysis being that's right there on top of me, that's absolutely terrifying. Instead of getting afraid, I'm going to just sit in my heart and I'm going to have a glowing heart. And this glowing heart is just going to protect me. And then perhaps next time, once you're able to do that, that glowing heart can come out bigger and that glowing heart can send love to that being. So you can really start to grow your own steps and your own process. You don't have to ever attack it like I'm never going to have nightmares again because the truth is as we go through things and more um, – unprocessed either fear or pain or sadness or grief start to come up, we're going to have those nightmares again, which are then showing us into deeper, um, deeper places of healing for ourselves. So they really are guides. Um, it's just changing and shifting that pers uh, perspective on how we can engage with a nightmare. And I do want to say one thing because I feel like I'm rambling. Um, behind every single nightmare is a gift. There is so much for you to uncover within a nightmare. And it may be something um, that you actually have like a dream guide give you a gift in the dream. Or it may be this beautiful dream that unfolds, which really changes you at a cellular level. And suddenly you feel like, wow, I'm on the beach. I feel the waves. I hear the ocean. Like something has shifted within me. Or it could be that density that you've been carrying around and it may not be um, so obvious in the dream that you've had this gift, but suddenly you took this one step and the next day you wake up, you're like, wow, like that little darkness that's been like on my shoulders, I feel lighter. I feel better. So there are always... Um, there's a treasure, there's a treasure really to be found if you're willing to go in a little bit and sh uh, shift through that murkiness. Well, I think it's really good that you just talked about this because not only the people that are watching right now, but the people that are going to watch like in the next time that this, as long as it stays on, people are terrified of going into dreams or they come out of it and they're like, I, they don't, they're so scared. They don't understand what happened. They don't understand, you know, if what, if there's an entity or like, it's just such a visceral real experience. So are uh, you explaining that right now? You, you just gave the framework for people to take that power back within having a nightmare and how to change the relationship Yes. with that dream work and then even just setting the intention before going to bed like i'm going to handle this differently this time if that happens i'm going in like this and taking control and one thing i really learned up from you about nightmares and dream work is when you said that you had this night i mean it really changed everything that i help people using you as the example that when you said there is this big monster thing in the dream and you went and you just tried to hug it and give it love oh, yeah. and it didn't want the love, <laughs> but you just hugged it and hugged it and just faced that fear. And that was so empowering to me because for so many years growing up, I allowed my nightmares and the entities that were coming through to, to have control over me. Mm -hmm. And we often do that. So I think everyone that's going to listen is just going to benefit from what you just said so much so thank don't you. even worry about rambling that was amazing oh, I need to hear that thank you i do want to let everyone know that as we go through this time and experience especially as a collective a lot of these fears are coming up um, in the dream time so you may be experiencing more fear worry nightmare dreams um and i would say that the best advice I could give you is to see it as an opportunity to start to clear that density within your body. If we have to be home, um, like why not engage in a dream work process where we're coming out and we're feeling better, where we're changing our body. Cause just as you mentioned about how nightmares are so visceral that we can feel that when we start to shift the dream and bring it into the light. And when we start to create our body feels that our body responds that when we have a dream where we are hugging our loved ones and coming to this place of sharing an experience, our body is responding to that. Our body is feeling that. So we can um, help to transmute a lot of this collective pain and fear that we're feeling. And also just the, personal which is so which and the personal shifting the personal is helping the collective so it's this interwoven process with dream work that um it just it taps into every field really that's amazing and i really think that it is really needed now because there was a huge shift that took place even last night and around 8 9 p.m i felt it and i felt this huge shift that i was almost you know i'm very sensitive to energies as some of us are and i felt the shift and i was like is there an entity around me i was like is there something negative happening i couldn't fully understand what was going on 
and then the dreams of last night, there was nothing fearful about it, but the dreams that I was having had powerful messages, powerful things in it. I mean, it even made me reach out to people in my life that were in the dreams just to reconnect with them. Oh, absolutely. And, and, and knowing that that stuff is coming forward right now, while we are in more of an isolated state, mm -hmm. Um, to take that power back because that fear is coming forward, people are going to start seeing that dark aspect of themselves and they're going to get scared of it rather than what you said was integrate it so it becomes part of them yes. and they take that control back. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I really think that, you know, some like if you are getting afraid with the nightmares, uh, don't beat yourself up like most people do. So even if you take this message, you're like, this is great. Oh, no, I had a nightmare and I didn't do anything. This is so terrible. It's okay. That is a completely natural response. It's all about planting the seeds to then engage with it a different way. So I totally want to let you guys know that even me doing all of like my shadow work and working with my nightmares, there are still so many times where I'll wake up and be like, whoa, like, ugh. If the things that you thought were supposed to happen didn't happen, but you can still shift that energy. And um, there's a cool practice as well. Um, if you're if you're not so willing to go into the dream to do it again, um, you can sit in a small meditation. And the like, for example, the other night I had a dream where I was basically going into the underworld. Um, I was saving this kid from like a ring of pedophiles. I finally make it out, and right as I'm making it out. I see this beautiful archway. It looks like it's going into this gorgeous park. I've been through pretty much like hell and back. Everything's moldy, disgusting. And as I'm just about to walk through the archway, um, my dream abruptly ends. And in that moment, I was kind of frustrated, like, oh, I didn't finish my task of walking through. So one thing that I did, and you could do this with lots of dreams if you feel that they're unfinished or that you uh, weren't responding to it in a way that you think was uh, best for you, um, you can finish the dream when you wake up through a light meditation. So I immediately was awake and I was like, oh my God, why did I not walk through the archway? So I set myself back into that position. I watched the last part of the dream. I looked around. I saw every single element of the dream that was there. So that way you're setting the scene for your yeah. dream. You really feel like you're in it. And this time I brought the child and I was just like, it's okay. And I brought it through the archway of light. I called in my own angels, my own team. I passed off the child. I was like, okay, I brought him out of this. This is for you now. And I, I have goosebumps right now feeling it because I really felt that that dream then was complete. And you'll start to notice that in that practice, some doors that you try and open may not work. Keep trying. So you may find that a dream already has a current of energy. So you can't completely change it and be like, okay, now suddenly, um, I don't know, there's a dragon and there's fire and there's something. It's like, no, 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 follow the natural rhythm. You'll find it. You'll see that you won't be able to, you, the meditation won't feel right. You'll feel it in your body. And that's when you know that you've, um, that you've really hit something. Your body will respond. And, and so, yeah. <laughs> Everybody, we're talking dream work with Juliana DeBar of the Honey Hive. Um, she is the dream queen. It, like anything that deals with dreams, she can, she's got it. She's the one to go to. And that's why I'm talking with her today, asking her questions. Um, if you haven't noticed, you should probably be writing a lot of this down because she's <laughs> coming through with some crazy, valuable information. You might have to watch this again just to get that. Um, but like, even me, I'm like learning new things and I'm tuning into what some of my dreams are teaching me and how to look at it in a different way and thinking, oh, I didn't get to complete that dream. When you set, even if I set the intention, I will complete my dreams. I don't get to. And then that just totally took it to a new place yeah. where you can, it's, it's something that you just tap back into through mm -hmm. a meditative state yes. and be able to complete that task or what needs to be done. So I think that's incredible. What do you think about, I know there's somebody watching right now, I saw them pop on that literally said, I can never remember my dreams. What are some tips for people that say that they can't remember their dreams? Like what is just something they could work on? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so with anything, I believe that dream work is a relationship between the dreamer and the dreams. So the first thing that I would do is um, 
engage in this relationship with your dreams. Talk to your dreams. Be like, hey, nightly dreams, I want to remember you. Um, and it's opening up that current of conversation. Because I feel like a lot of people who don't remember their dreams, it was either shut off like in childhood because of nightmares and trauma that they didn't want, or from being too busy and the stresses of life. Because dreaming takes energy. And if we are using all all our energy in the day with work, with kids, with a scary boss or anything like that, we may be too tired to really um, dream the entire dream. And our body, which our body loves us so much, would rather give us the rest. But when we open up back that communication, we can say, okay, hey, I want to start working with you. What can I do? My favorite thing to do is set the intention. So writing it down with a piece of paper, this is a piece of paper. Um, so like I to pen, that whole motion is once again, signaling even deeper than just saying. So you say it, but you write it. It's kind of like, mm. I, I guess it's making it bolder to yeah. yourself, to your subconscious. Um, tonight, I will remember my dreams. And what I suggest is when you wake up, if you feel like you don't have any dreams, well, first of all, don't wake up to an alarm. Alarm is like the first thing to make all the dreams go out. If I wake up to an alarm, I could tell you I'm not remembering my dreams. So if you can naturally wake up, that's best. If that's not an option, they, they do have those slow timer alarms that like kind of like slow rise. Set it about 15 minutes before you have to wake up. So that way you can start to pull you out. And in that process of pulling you out of the dream, that's actually where you will remember a lot. So if you have that slow rise come in. Yeah. And then um, laying in bed. So laying in bed is a huge trick. If you jump out of bed, you use the restroom, you drink a glass of water, dreams are coming out, falling right out of the head. So laying in bed and allowing for them to come. Something else that can happen is like if you move just slightly to different positions. So say you wake up on one side, um, but you know that you mostly slept in the other type side of the night, moving back into that position just kind of starts to trigger to the mind. And then um, the first thing I would say is you, if you have nothing, what are your feelings? Just write that down. So simple thing is like, okay, I really don't remember a full dream, but I remember that I was, um, I was, I was happy and I felt calm. And I think that I saw green grass, write that down. That's perfect. Um, and how I mentioned earlier about just like growing things, you don't need to remember the full dream. You want it to be exciting and fun where you're engaging the relationship. So if you're able to wake up, write three things one day, great, good for you. The next week, maybe you might be able to have a sentence or two. Great, good for you. But if you come into the place of like, I need to remember the whole thing. Oh no, there's a message that I lost. Creating that tension with the relationship won't make it an enjoyable process, but the enjoyable process is what brings the dream forward. So the second you start um, remembering more and you start to listen to them, it's like turning the faucet right back on. Those dreams will start to come. So I definitely suggest um, writing down whatever you can, um, waking up without an alarm if possible, and then, um, and then writing down intentions for dreams and trying to enter into that relationship with them. Those are great. Those are great tips. And I hope the person that I know that was telling me about their dream stuff saw that. And if they didn't, I will make sure that they watch this video. <laughs> and um, you guys, any one of you guys, you can absolutely reach out to me. You can share a dream with me. If you have any questions, I am absolutely here for you. Like, I love this stuff so much. I think that dreams are, I mean, they're accessible to everyone. We all have dreams, whether or not we remember them, like we're all dreaming. So it's a very accessible point for us, but not everyone's using it to, um, like it's, it's <laughs> I'm getting so excited. I came and talk. There's so many gifts that are there in dreams. And if we access that, like that brings so much richness to our life and not everyone's using that full access point that we have yet. Anyone can enter this. Like you don't yeah. need money. <laughs> You don't need to leave your bed. It's right there for you um, every night. Now you're holding dream circles um, virtually now because of our situation that we are in. Um, <clears throat> how can people find the information of that or join that? Because you have once, a, you're going to do it twice a week or two? Yeah, like, yeah. So right now I'm still playing with it because I've just started this. It's actually pretty exciting though because I got a girl calling from Canada. <laughs> and so I live in Los Angeles. So I'm like, yeah. Um, <laughs> But I'm, my intention right now that I'm holding is to have two dream circles, um, one kind of like midday during the week, and then one um, at, well, it'll be tonight, actually, 7 to 9 p.m. For people who still have to basically be at home and be on computers um, for work, I want to have both of those available. 
Um, what I will be doing is setting an intention for the week of dreaming. This is completely optional. Whether or not you dream with the intention or not, you are still welcome to come um, to Circle. But I really think that this is an important thing to offer you guys, and I'm excited to offer to you guys because we are processing so much that's happening. And, like, I am here for you. Um, you have people you've never met who also are here for you that want to help you move through these things, all this energy that's building up. So you can definitely follow me um, on Instagram. This is also free. Um, if you feel like donating, that is absolutely only if you're called to, I will receive that. But if not, like this is free. So they're really just come and try it, see what it's all about. Um, but yeah, so twice a week, um, this week, it'll be tonight, 7 to 9 p.m. Um, Pacific Standard Time. I believe that's what it's called. <laughs> and then I'll have one Thursday from 1 to 3 p.m. And our dream theme is water. So dreaming with healing waters, um, the water that is within us, the water that is outside, um, connecting with all of that. And it's perfect because um, water has to do with emotions. So as we pull in these times of like really dealing with our emotions, processing them, understanding them, it's a great time to use water as that guide and um, that nurturance that she brings forward. That's so incredible. And you know, those people that are watching that didn't catch that, but I, uh, you know, I've taken one of her dream circles in person and it's such a cool experience to like be in a trusting environment with people, have them share their dreams because you're learning so much through other people about yourself and them Absolutely. just sharing it allows you to see things from a different perspective. Um, and she's, as you can see, she is like such a light being um, <laughs> that, as I said, when I first met her, I, it was right when Pilot, my dog, had, had transitioned that literally that week. And I, um, and she was my partner. We had to do this exercise and I just, we didn't even say anything. She was just literally pulling out the dense energy that was surrounding me and around the time that I was in. So her, she is a very powerful, powerful person and power with the light. Obviously she wants to share this with all of you. I highly recommend checking it out and you can follow her on Instagram at, at the honey hive buzz. Mm -hmm. Correct. And yes. then at Juliana Devar, your name for your own yeah. account. But um, but that's where you can find out more information. I highly recommend you tune in tonight if you are listening to this and want to play with your dreams tonight. Um, because the surge of energy that came through last night, I mean, I woke up at 3.30 like, who is it? Who is yeah. <laughs> Like Queen Latifah when she wakes up and hits Steve Martin. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Like that. And so... I, I I just know that this is such an open time for people to access that. And these are amazing tools. Someone just said followed. <laughs> they followed oh, you. Yay. But these are amazing tools to be able to use um, to do dream work. And I think that what we should do is, I think, you know, the things that come forward as tools to use in our dreams might, you know, shift as we go along. And it might be cool to do check-ins like this to share your wisdom with other people and to get them involved oh, and and be doing this more often. Um, is there anything more that you want to add to our conversation before we close on? I know you have a dream circle tonight, so I know that takes energy and I want you to freshen Yeah, yourself. I feel so juiced. I'm like, let's go, let's go. I'm so excited. <laughs> it's been so fun calling in. Um, I guess the only thing I want to say is if you're curious, come try. It's really, it's welcoming, it's inviting. Um, even if you don't feel comfortable sharing a dream, you are welcome to listen and um, like I never incur or I never force anyone to speak if they don't want to so you could still come and be in the experience and to I, I guess just soak in it you know so I welcome you I would love to have you reach out to me I'm totally here um, let's share dreams and grow them and yeah thank you also I even love this... you Derek <laughs> thank you. You are even so this sweet. conversation so like even talking to you and seeing you each week, typically, um, in our in our group, I still learn, like this conversation alone allowed me to take a, new tools, learn new things, and be able to um, utilize them. And that's why I just feel like everybody can use your wisdom and the energies that you're bringing through because you are bringing a high-level energy that is so loving um, that this world needs it, especially now. And that's why I feel like we should continue this conversation and allow people to um, tune into that high vibration of 
manifesting dream work creation rather than what else is taking place. Let's oh, focus absolutely. on the create what we're creating, yes. not what is necessarily being taken apart at this mm -hmm. moment. Absolutely. And I think that this is what focusing on the creation part about it is I mean, if you come um, to my page, it's like, let's dream together. And there's this beautiful feeling of like, I have an intention, yet I'm also sharing this web of intention with a few other people who are dreaming these creations. So in that way, we are like nodal points dreaming this new future into being. And I think even just in that, whether or not you join the circle is if you decide one night to take the uh, prompt of dreaming for healing for the earth, dreaming of healing for yourself, dreaming of healing waters, any of that, like you are connecting with people who are dreaming that same, that same future into being. And that in itself is exciting. And that's the connectivity of everybody. Mm -hmm. And joining something like that allows people to see how interconnected we really are and how really this entire experience that we are going through is breaking down things that were holding us back from that connectivity. Absolutely. So I'm so excited. Thank you so much for sharing. I hope people oh, join the dream you. circle again. It's at, at the honey hive buzz yes. and you can get information there. And this won't be the last you're seeing of <laughs> Juliana Devar and um, her dream work wisdom as we will be talking about these things in the future. I appreciate you so much and Thank I you. will hope to see you in some respect or form this later yes. on this week um and i thank everybody for watching for listening um and i hope you took something from this experience go ahead and take notes write it down go back and watch it and uh we'll talk to you soon